One of the most famous accounts of a close master body servant relationship was that of Andrew Martin Chandler and his servant, Silas. At 15, Chandler joined the Confederate service and was put in Company F of the 44th Mississippi Infantry. His 17-year-old former slave accompanied him. Silas Chandler received his manumission before the war began, yet he chose to stay with his friend and follow him off to war. My name is Bobby Chandler. I'm the great-grandson of Silas Chandler from West Point, Mississippi, which is my home. Silas Chandler lived in West Point as a slave belonging to the Chandler family. Silas was a slave of Andrew Chandler's father. Andrew Chandler and Silas grew up to be very good friends. Andrew went to the Civil War and Silas went with them. Probably as a body, body soldier, but uh, to my understanding, he fought with them side by side, which was something unusual for slaves in the Civil War. That kind of devotion, duty, loyalty, whatever you call it, was hardly uh, uh, narrow. I mean, what many people fail to re realize is that before the Civil War, there were over 500,000 free blacks scattered throughout the South, 60,000 of them in the state of Virginia alone. And many of these people have go, their roots go back generations and generations, and there were strong ties there, that human beings being what we are, these complicated species, you could not rupture those relationships simply because of the differences in color. There is evidence that blacks fought for their masters in, in, the, in, their, in their mode as body servants, but again that's very distinct from being officially recognized as soldiers, as being armed as soldiers. Grabbing a weapon, um, whether it's a rifle or a knife or a shovel when the enemy is advancing directly on you is a different thing from being issued a weapon, issued ammunition, and being given orders to fight as an integrated combat union. In that sense, blacks did not fight for the Confederacy. They were a very elite group in the South. This is something that their status, uh, and this is what they were trained to do, this was their identity. And to go to something unknown, uh, for some uh, promise uh, that may not be a promise at all. Uh, instead of what they knew and they had a life that was very good for them, very, a life that was very good, especially compared with other people who were enslaved, uh, I think it is a very, very natural thing for uh, people who were that close to the masters to stay with them. So-called body servants that went off with their masters to war uh, were slaves who accompanied a slave owner to the battle and they would serve as cook and valet and this kind of thing uh, but that's another myth because uh, most confederate soldiers did not own slaves they estimate that nine out of ten men that fought in the confederate army never owned a slave so it was only the upper class and the few that had the affluence to bring a body servant with him to the war Many of the uh, blacks that served with Confederate armies were there because they were recruited to be wagon drivers or cooks or whatever, not because they came off with a master. Silas saved Andrew's life. Andrew got wounded in the Battle of Chickamauga, I think it's called, in Georgia. And they wanted to take Andrew's leg. Silas didn't want him to uh, amputate his leg, so he stole him away from the camp and took him back home to Mississippi uh, by hitching a freight train and hiking on a freight train with him. <laughs> 